All right, good morning. Welcome back here. Wendy's first quarter, 102-5 the game. Big Joe Dermott Carlin, Brett Hopkins with you. Taking you up to 9 o'clock this morning. Uh, this Saturday night, big event. Big event happening here in town for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. It's Crossfire Wrestling going on at the National Fairgrounds Sports Arena. They did this a few months ago. Great turnout over there. Huge crowd. And this time it's even better because of the guest who we have on the phone right now, and that is world-famous wrestler Matt Hardy. Matt, good morning to you. All right, good morning. Thank you. How are you today? I'm very good. How are you? Very good. Hey, just looking up a lot of stuff about you. I mean, Hardy Boys, your career and everything, but you're coming to town this Saturday uh, for the Make a Help to help, help raise money for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. You're kind of semi-retired. What made you kind of get back into doing this again? Uh, really just the, the love for it. You know, uh, the, the reason I am, uh, you know, semi-retired is because of, uh, you know, my body's a little beat up. But I can go one or two days a week, and uh, right now I'm doing that, staying in shape. And it's such a good cause. It's in Nashville. It's a fundraiser for Make-A-Wish. Uh, I couldn't turn this down. And it's going to be a huge night this Saturday. I'm really excited about it. Matt, you got the release from WWE in April 11th of 2005. But you know what? The fans weren't subtle with that. They started a petition to get you back put on the slate. How did that make you feel, knowing that your fans had that kind of support for you? Uh, it, was, it was really special. And it showed, actually, the power of the people. You know, because at the end of the day, they, uh, they're the ones who buy tickets. They... Uh, you know, they command what the, the Federation does and what the performers and what the promotion does. And, you know, this, this weekend, uh, myself versus MVP, it's a match that the, the fans, once again, really demanded that the WWE do. And it's something we never got to finish properly. So we're going to finish it this uh, Saturday in Nashville, and I'm really excited about that. Matt, in football right now, uh, the storyline has been more about, uh, you know, safety for players and, and, and really bringing awareness to what the, the sport does. It's a violent sport. It takes a toll on your body. And I'm just curious, because of what you just said, uh, you know, wrestling, it, it's, it's tough, man. It, it takes a toll on your body, and there are injuries all the time and over the years. And I've seen a bunch of the former wrestlers, former greats, uh, as they get older. It, it is not kind to them aging uh, because of all the hits they've taken in the sport. Do you think there's enough awareness in wrestling of uh, long-term effects after you, you, know, you leave the sport? Uh, I mean, sadly, you bring up a good point, but it's just something that's actually starting to kind of come to the surface right now. And the, the awareness is growing as time goes on. And something I've been an advocate of for a long time is actually having an off season because there's a lot of guys, once they start wrestling and they're working, you know, 250, 260 days a year, they never get a break. And they're doing that whether they're hurt or they're not hurt. And that's something I think needs to be kind of a mandatory amongst everyone. Because, yeah, concussions are a very serious thing, and there's a lot of issues that can stem from it. And as wrestlers, we're falling on wooden steel, and concussions are going to happen. Guys really need to take care of themselves. And the bigger promotions need to make sure that the guys uh, are forced to do that. You know, we've, we had some of the TNA guys in here uh, over time, and, you know, just recently I think James Storm and Eric Young and those guys. Were in, and you're right, the schedule, I had no idea how much you guys – travel not only just here in the states but around the world in the calendar year i mean you guys are always gone yeah it's uh i mean it's it's, it's a brutal schedule you know if you're working for a tna or if you're working for a wwe that's why I, i'm really enjoying this right now being able to do some occasional you know shows here and there and being able to call your own shots and actually make your own schedule you know so when i was offered saturday and i spoke with crossfire and it was you know myself versus mvp we had a chance to do that and it's you know, I, I can do one or two days a week, and if I need to take off because my body's hurt, I can. You know, it's just one of those things I couldn't turn down because it's such a special, a special match against a special opponent, and it's for such a great cause of the Make a Wish Foundation. He was 50% of the Hardy Boys. Matt Hardy joining us here in the winning first quarter of 1025 the game. Back in 1998, you and your brother Jeff got your first full time WWF contracts. Was that kind of like being drafted? Uh, yeah, uh, to a, you know, to a degree, it's one of those things. You have uh, several, several tens of thousands of wrestlers out there that are trying to make it, you know, and then you can only have uh, a few hundred under contract at one time with one of the big companies. So it was definitely our dream come true to uh, to be able to make it. We were in the right place at the right time, and you know, we had the right ability. So it worked out well. And I was with WWE for almost 12 years. So I wouldn't be where I am right now without them, obviously, and I enjoyed all the time I had there. But I'm having a lot of fun right now just because I'm really getting back to the reason I love this business and the the reason I love being a performer, and that's being in front of the crowd, being in front of people, 
putting smiles on people's faces and hearing the you know hearing the oohs and ahs of the people. Matt Hardy, you know, I, wrestling pro wrestling around Middle Tennessee is is big. It, it, you know, and it's these local communities around here. Every Saturday, and every weekend, there's a wrestling tournament, and people show up in droves. Let me ask you, why does this sport continue to thrive? Everybody's pronounced this sport dead about 19 times. It keeps coming back, and each time it comes back, Matt, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. I just think it's one of those things. It, it's really a uh, you know, it's really a staple of American culture in so many ways. Because you have guys, you know, we're 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 some of the best athletes you'll ever meet. You know, between just the physicality of what we do, uh, and you mix that along with the schedule, where you know we have guys that are on the road 250, 300 days a year, and the things people see us do in the ring, you know, falling off the top rope, things that myself and my brother did, falling off ladders, falling through tables, uh, we look like living, breathing superheroes, and. Wrestling is entertainment. You know, not only are we athletes, there's an entertainment, there's a story behind everything we're doing, and it's just fun to watch. It really is a staple of American culture, and it just—it's not going to go away because it, it's fun to watch, and it's also uh, its also you know an, an athletic form. Matt, who's one wrestler that when you saw for the first time you were starstruck? For me, first time I met Hulk Hogan, I was like, wow. <laughs> is there anybody that did that to you? I'll, I'll be honest. The first person I was a huge fan of was the Macho Man, Randy Savage. I, <laughs> oh, as a kid, yeah. I, I grew up digging the Macho Man. So when I got to meet him, that that would have been my guy. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Listen, I was doing the research on you, Matt, and I kind of got confused in some of the storylines. I just really want to know how real the rivalry with you and Edge is. I mean, is that a real life situation, or was that just one of those things that was played out, you know, for us the the fans of WWE? It definitely had some realistic. Uh, uh, you know, pieces to it for sure. Right. It's a situation where uh, we really had an issue. I had an issue with the girl I was dating at that time, and it's something that was real, and it kind of became a storyline. And then from there, the line was blurred a little bit. But it was a tough situation. It was definitely very real. It was very intense. Um, usually in wrestling, the storylines that are you know ha- have uh, have some truth to them are the best ones. Mm. Much like my opponent this Saturday on the 19th in Nashville. The, you know, in Nashville uh, Fairgrounds Arena, uh, MVP. Both him and I were super competitive. We were tag team partners. We thought we could, you know, we always said, whatever you can do, I can do it better. And that was our whole deal. We were, right. you know, feuding for almost a year on TV. And, and it was very real, that rivalry between us. And it, once again, what happens this Saturday will still be very real because we are both very competitive. Ooh, 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 ooh. Matt, we had a discussion earlier this morning about free throws in basketball, and I don't understand why they can't have free throws. <laughs> These guys, are, you don't understand the pressure situation, people yelling and screaming at you. What's the biggest crowd you ever performed in front of? Um, there, there's been a few times I've been in front of crowds of, Seventy to eight thousand for WrestleMania. <laughs> That's what? amazing. What is that feeling like? <laughs> you know, I think once you get to a certain number of people, you know, maybe it's a twenty thousand, twenty five thousand. It really doesn't make a big difference. You know, you just realize you're in front of a lot of people, and that all, all the eyeballs are focused on you, and that you're the center of attention. And once you get to a certain level, I think anything bigger is just it doesn't really change the fact that like there's a lot of pressure on you, and everyone's looking at you. I know that Darren asked you questions about safety and what potentially um, the WWE and other factions might do to protect their athletes and whatnot, but do you have concerns long-term-wise for the things that you were able to do back then and, and your future? Uh, yeah, I uh, obviously have concerns, especially because uh, I wrestled such an intense style and we did so many matches that were so physically demanding. As I was saying, like ladder matches, tables matches, the TLC matches, which is a combination of those things, cage matches. You know, there's there's so many things that I put my body through and, and so many things I did to actually beat up and abuse my body. I mean, I know as I get older, like, my physical infrastructure is going to definitely feel those things a lot more. And, mm. and I, I'm doing everything I can every day to try and stay as healthy as possible and try and stay ahead of that curve. But, yeah, I've done a lot of things to my body over the last 15 years that, you know, aren't healthy for a body. But in life, man, the way I look at it is, like, you only live once. You only get one shot to, uh, around in this in this life. And I got to live my dream, so... Yeah. I, I did what I had to do to make it worth it. It's good Very good. Matt Hardy, thank you for your time. Thanks for coming to town on Saturday, and thanks for helping out such a worthy cause as the Make-A-Wish Foundation. We'll see you Saturday night. Thanks, Matt. You got it. Thank you, guys. We'll see you Saturday. Very good. Gosh.